All right, anyway, guys, uh, the most horrific live stream incidents, Iceberg. Warning, this video contains themes of violence and death. It's made in a documentarian sense and does not seek to glorify oh, or illegal activity or harmful behaviors. I made every effort to censor this video to be in line with YouTube's community guidelines, though I had to take out a lot of entries for this one. So if you want to see the full uncut oh, 46 oh, minute oh, version, I put it up on Patreon oh, for a dollar. Oh, We'll first start with the more strange, and then gradually move on to some of the most horrific events that ever happen on livestream. I made this iceberg myself, and we'll be covering a wide range of oh, topics shit. that certainly isn't for everyone, so fair warning now. Atrioc, a well-known Twitch streamer with over 330,000 followers, got caught in quite the controversy. During one of his streams, he was playing Hitman, and for a very, very brief moment, he alt-tabbed showing all the applications open on his computer. Now, I don't know how anyone initially noticed this, but if you pause at the exact frame the windows pop up, you can see a very suspicious tab. Atrioc was found to be watching Deepfake, which is already strange to have open on your computer, but what's worse is that there were videos of other female Twitch streamers. The whole thing blew up when a screenshot from his stream showing the site's tab was shared online. The screenshot showed the thumbnails of the fake explicit videos showing streamers like Pokimane and Maya Higa. And after this got out, Atriot couldn't deny it. Bro, this is so weird. Why did he come on stream with his wife afterwards? That's so weird. That's so... Dude, do you remember this shit? Oh my god, dude. And then he was going on about the fact that how he's like the most ethical Twitch streamer and he doesn't do any of this shit and he doesn't even have the booba emote enabled because he's just that ethical of a guy. But then he was the guy who was fucking getting deep fakes of streamers and fapping to them. In the back. So that's he's basically admitting to be too, being like two faced as fuck, right? Because he's projecting this outwards thing. But then actually, behind closed doors, where it actually matters, he's actually doing, he's doing that shit. So then it's like, well, what, you know, that doesn't make sense. So then you might as well enable the fucking booba emote. Enable the booba emote, Atrioc. Enable it. Enable it now. He quickly responded by going live with his girlfriend to admit to everything and to apologize. Oh he said God. he was just curious about AI and deepfake <laughs> one night and ended up on that site basically for research purposes. <laughs> Okay, dude. And then he for research versus I doubt he had to download them to his computer, bro, for research. Okay, dude. I'm sorry, dude. He also posted an apology on Twitter, oh especially God. saying sorry to Maya Higa and Pokimane for dragging them into bro. this mess. The affected streamers and wider community were obviously very upset, uh. and after the incident, Atriox said he was stepping away from streaming. But he didn't just disappear. He came back with a plan to fight against sites that create and share deepfake oh, content. He's got a he partnered with a law firm and even put up sixty thousand dollars to help any Twitch streamer who wanted to take down such content. So Atriot made a very, very. It's like it's one of these things where at least he's doing something, right? At least he's doing something, right? But then at the same time, if he hadn't got caught, would he have done anything? That I can't respect it, right? I can't, res I can't respect it because of the fact that he only did it because he got caught. And then also the fact that he was outwardly projecting an appearance of like, oh, look how ethical I am, look how anti whatever, all the shit I am. Like, uh, dude, I just can't get over the booba thing. The booba thing where he was constantly on about how he did, he's like done their booba emotes because he just respects women that much. But then you're doing the literal. Actual fucking degenerate shit. You're doing degenerate shit. In the background. When it actually matters. When deepfakes. Chat, I, I don't care. Well, okay. So as you say, do you care? Would you care if there was deepfakes of me made? I, I'll be honest. When it comes to the whole deepfake thing, chat. I don't really get it. Because I, I know it's not me. But then I'm a guy. And um, my sex appeal doesn't really mean anything to me. I don't really care. I don't care if I don't care if you think I'm sexy or I'm not sexy or you know I'm someone sees like a fucking fake image of me with it, my cock out whatever I don't really care about that imagery um, unless it was getting presented to people as real when it wasn't real okay then I would start caring about it because then that'd be annoying I'd be like well that's not real and, and that but that's just like misinformation right I, no in terms of the actual like do I care like do I, you know no uh, but I could totally get why someone could care about something like that. Like, if you spend all this time making a brand or an image or whatever, you spend all this time, like, getting people to know you because you, you know, what, 
whatever for for whatever talent or whatever thing you're doing and then people then go on and then just turn you into some sexual object whenever you try to avoid that um your entire way through and that obviously happens to chicks a lot right um you know i could see that being that piss me off if i was you know i could see that right if you're if you're like pokemon or whatever right or well, not pokemon in front of the best example whatever if you're like a streamer who's not they're not like selling sex appeal and then you're getting used like that i could see how that could that could be really annoying and that could be bad right very stupid mistake but has worked to try and redeem himself Zillion OP oh. was a disabled streamer who had been wheelchair bound <laughs> since 2011 after a bad car crash and in 2012 he started streaming on Twitch. He got popular for his personality and obviously being in a wheelchair which is yeah. rather unique, drawing about 200 to 400 viewers per stream. He's a pretty stand up guy you know, oh shit. His situation classic. obviously led to more subscriptions and donations, oh. with people feeling sorry for his condition. But in 2013, about six months into oh. a streaming career, someone hacked his Facebook page. The hacker, who seemed to have very personal knowledge about Zillion, started posting that he could actually walk and was scamming his viewers for money. The hacker made fun of him, accused him of fraud, but didn't prove Zillion wasn't disabled, leading to most people thinking that the hacker was merely trolling and attempting to ridicule his physical limitations. Well, Though during all these allegations, it was noted that Zillion had previously engaged in questionable activities for personal gain. For instance, on the 10th of January 2013, just 10 days before the Facebook hacking. Mmm. Mmm. That's interesting. Oh, look at this. He started. Oh, he's got cheats on, guys. Incident. He was banned from playing Diablo 3 for starting a stream with cheats on. He then lied about the reason for his ban, claiming it was due to account sharing rather than the actual cause. I mean, bro. So the okay, so the same type of person who lies about something lies about the reason why they were banned for something. All right, is also a complete con artist. The same person who's sitting there lying, okay, about being disabled and scam people. Might, okay, is also doing some weird shit where they pretend they got banned for something lesser when they actually got banned for something greater. Curious, isn't it, Chet? Very curious. Which overall caused people to grow slightly more suspicious of Zillion and his willingness to lie. Then, on the 5th of April 2013... That's it, right? Si willingness to lie. There it is. I'm just saying. That's it, bro. That is it. That's the reality, isn't it, Chet? That is the reality. I mean, that, how can that not bother you, Chet? If someone, instead of telling you the truth lies about something and says it's something less than it actually is and then continues to lie about something for years and years and years on end yet i mean really just what just tell the truth just tell the truth bro just tell the truth seemingly a miracle had occurred on zillion's stream oh shit. zillion wheeled in frame and then walked out of frame <laughs> as it appeared he forgot to be disabled it's a miracle. zillion was promptly banned from twitch citing fraud as the reason as it looked like he was essentially feigning a disability for more donations twitch also went as far to offer refunds to his subscribers reiterating the zero Based. tolerance policy for such behaviors Based. later zillion attempted to return to streaming on different platforms but with limited success due to his tarnished reputation years later he resurfaced under a new alias but why would anyone why would anyone watch you after you're a fucking literal scam artist, like if you're an actual con artist, why would anyone watch you, bro? Straight up. It's bluish. I need to be exposed again. However, this time he presented evidence saying he had been genuinely disabled before recovering over time. In an interview with another YouTuber, Wavy Web Surf, Zillion could share his side of the story, admitting that he truly was disabled and wheelchair bound after his car accident. However, he had been in recovery. But then he pretend. Nah, dude, you he baited. Nah, this is complete bullshit. He was selling it like he was completely wheelchair bound and disabled. And he's like, uh, bro, he had a wheelchair goal. He had a wheelchair goal. Right? A straight up wheelchair goal to pay for a fucking wheelchair. All right. And then he got a new fish tank recovery and was able to walk again but not well enough to completely abandon the wheelchair and it was his mistake for not being transparent as to his viewers no, and basically delivery. everybody it looked like he had basically just ask al Kaiser about this he was around al Kaiser, do you know chat al is so old that he was actually around during this like this you know this historical event this legendary event of like zillion op like the miracle the great miracle of zillion op where he became a stand-up guy he was actually around during that time that's like that's crazy 
Joker switched off his disability, as he had never even mentioned he was recovering from his accident on stream, leaving most to believe he was just permanently wheelchair bound. His newer account, that's It's lying. Bluish, was eventually banned for ban evasion. I'm sorry, but yeah, that's lying. Like, if you, if you I, I deliberately admit something that you know would ch completely change someone, someone's interpretation of the situation, you're lying. Right? You're, you're just lying. Right. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a bit curious, though, chat, that, you know, someone who would get banned for botting and then lie and say it was something lesser than botting. Uh, it's also a complete scam artist. That is interesting, though. That is just, it's just a bit curious, chat. A bit curious. Now, this is likely the most infamous incident on this list, as it revolves around the biggest YouTuber at the time, oh, PewDiePie, one the of the most bridge. subscribed and influential content creators on the platform. The incident in question occurred in September 2017 <laughs> during a live stream of the game Player Unknown's Battlegrounds or PUBG. In game, someone had just shot and killed his oh, teammate, and then yeah. in response to that, PewDiePie called the enemy the word beginning with N. Now, obviously, people were upset because PewDiePie has a huge audience with millions of subscribers, including lots of young children. And this wasn't his first big controversy. Probably. Just over six months before, PewDiePie. How the fuck do I get banned from the most random shit? Okay, I get banned for the most random bullshit. It's complete benign trash. Like, a literal fucking complete joke, actual satire meme. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I say, I'm I'm forcing, bro. Forcing them like weaves. Okay, forcing them like weaves. And I say some shit about, like, oh, yeah. I, I, go, I, I use hyperbole chat where I exaggerate. Okay, I send an exaggerated anti-weave statement as a meme, ironically, and I get banned. Okay, PewDiePie can straight up, unironically, no meme, just call someone the N-word, hard R. Uh, and then he doesn't even, like, bro, I mean, he's PewDiePie. He's PewDiePie. PewDiePie had posted a video where he paid some guys on Fiverr to hold up an anti-Semitic sign for a video. Though that's a whole nother story. PewDiePie quickly came back with- And he just wanted to see if they would do it, right? That's, I feel like that's reasonable. Like, he's like, yo, how far could I make them, yo, how far could I make them go, right? Just to see, but then it's kind of, it is kind of a little bit questionable. But, I mean, he just wanted to see if they would do it. Linus hard eye. Oh, dude, that's a classic one. Linus was talking about doing the hard eyes. Rather straightforward and transparent apology, where he acknowledged that being in the heat of the game wasn't an excuse for what he said, and basically said he was an idiot for saying it, and it wouldn't happen again. Slicker is a fairly popular variety streamer that does everything from IRL streams to playing CSGO. Though that's not why he's on this iceberg. Slicker had a serious problem. Yo, Slicker started telling some of his viewers, friends, and fellow streamers that he needed money for urgent things like family problems. But that wasn't true at all. He actually used all the money for gambling online, trying to win back what he'd lost due to his addiction. He ended up taking about $300,000 from people over Bro. just a few years, promising to pay them back, but obviously never doing it. With figures like Ludwig and Just the Minx being personally owed thousands by Slicker. Eventually, Slicker couldn't get keep better. it a secret anymore. Did Lakari get scammed by uh, Slicker, by the way? Did Lakari get scammed by Slicker? <laughs> he went live and admitted to everything. He said that he had a gambling problem and lied about needing money for emergencies. This confession obviously made people angry and disappointed, with Twitch even suspending him for a while. Now, Arab Andy, real name Jamal Haraz, was a guy who made content by live streaming his life in real time on the internet. He was part of a community that streams their daily activities, though it often comes with doing it stream or controversial things to get more viewers. Like how in Arab Andy streams, he enabled a feature where viewers could donate money to have their messages read aloud by text-to-speech voice. Though this wasn't unique to Andy's stream, it was a growing trend amongst these types of streamers. Bro, could you imagine, bro, walking around with fucking TTS in public? Could you imagine doing that? To be fair, I did this chat, but I deliberately didn't do it. I muted it whenever I was in an enclosed space. Like, I, I only did it while walking in outdoor areas. Because I didn't... Okay, I was doing it ethically. All right? Bald white man in the back, this is for you. Bald white man. Bald white man. Bald white man. Though as annoying as these streamers are, Arab Andy took it a step further. On the 31st of May 2018, Arab Andy decided to pull a prank. He walked into a classroom at the University of Washington while live streaming. Someone watching his stream decided to donate money, which triggered a text to speech donation saying something along the lines of, the explosive has been activated. Naturally, this freaked everyone out. The students in the classroom were terrified, thinking it was a real bomb threat, and they all evacuated the room. The Bro, is that racist? Oh, is that racist? Would they have really done that if that was just like... I'm just saying, if he was white, would they have ran like that? 
All right. I don't know, like, if there was, uh, okay. I mean, maybe he had, like, a duffel bag, right? And, and like, a fucking, you know, a bulge coming out that looks like a gun. Maybe. Um, Police were called to handle what everyone thought might be a serious threat, and then Arab Andy was arrested for what he thought was just a small joke. Though it spiraled even further, because making a bomb threat, no matter how genuine you are, is a felony. After facing charges, he was able to post bail of $75,000. However, it was on the condition that he could never in his life live stream or make any sort of content online again. As of now, no one really knows what he's doing. Ice that's Poseidon crazy. is a streamer with a long and complex history. Wait, that's crazy. Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, you're telling me... Wait, he can never stream again because of that... I mean, don't get me wrong. I could see how the right TTS at the right time could cause some really crazy... Like, if someone said it was a fire or something, or someone said, you know, I guess it led the bomb threat meme, right? But, I mean, bro. I mean, wait, so he, is, um, he did sneak onto the premises. I don't know how that works. Was he, like, allowed to walk around this, this premises? Like, it was in a public area, and someone said, the bomb has been planted. That's like, bro, that's not even bad. University, can you just walk in? No, I mean, it's just, um, dude. Okay, there's a difference. If you're walking around, okay, it's I guess it's context, right? Okay, I totally get it. If you do some fake bomb meme in an airport, okay, I mean, so that's just you asking to get, like, bro. Do you remember that one guy? He is just eating a pear, bro, and he got, like, shot 17 times. Like, <laughs> like that guy, just, he was just eating a fucking pear. Um, you know, you don't, go, you don't do that at the airport, right? But, you know, do it, like, if you're on a fucking field, bro, and it's, like, you're clearly, like, the guy's wearing an IRL backpack, and he's got a camera, and then it's just, the bomb is being blended. I mean, I'm, bro, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think it's context dependent. It's context dependent. That's crazy, though. Yeah, well, no. Okay. If you break into someone's house and it's nighttime and the TTS goes off and says, I'm going to fucking kill you, you fucking... Uh, well, okay, well, that TTS is going to be a lot more scary than, you know, uh, it, the same thing happening in broad daylight, like, you know, when this guy who's got blue hair, okay, and he's pointing a camera at himself, and that same TTS goes off. Of course. All right, that's what I'm saying. It's context dependent. Like, d d okay, chat. Is doing a bomb threat meme worse at either a airport, right, or a drama class? That's it's context matters. All right, that's what I'm saying. He knows what he's doing. Ice Poseidon is a streamer with a long oh, and complex shit, history. I, I can honestly make an iceberg oh, about him shit, and his streams, scams, and controversies. That we're just going to talk about a singular incident. Ice Poseidon, during one of his live streams in Los Angeles, came across a group of people who were all looking upwards towards a building, which prompted him to investigate the situation further. Upon joining the group and looking up, Ice Poseidon saw a man standing on a ledge looking down at the crowd, intending to jump off. Ice said he wanted to wait and see what happened and see the police tackle the guy down. Though he seemed to be more worried about getting banned on Twitch for showing the incident rather than the man's life itself. I kind of want to watch to see like the police tackle him, but I don't want to get banned, yeah. As he was moving away from the crowd, the man on the building jumped down, with Ice running away to protect his stream from capturing the event. Fortunately, the man did survive his attempt. Damn. Malik San oh shit, he survived. Holy shit. The fuck? That was during the Pokemon Go days, I believe. That was that was Pokemon Go. I think I remember hearing about that. Like, did you hear that someone fucking jumped over a building on ice to stream or something? I think I, I think I, that was Pokemon Go. I feel like it was Pokemon Go era. L was LA was after Pokemon Go? Was it around that? Oh, no, it was LA. Okay. Hmm. Chaz was an aspiring IRL streamer. He streamed their daily activities, though, as with Arabandi, it often comes with doing its stream and controversial things to get more viewers. Sanchez, a self-identified incel, became infamous for his streams that often involved harassment, particularly targeted at women and other forms of public disturbance in Manhattan, New York. Incel communities where Sanchez found his identity are typically groups of young men that share a belief in their inability to find romantic or sexual partners. This belief, often coupled with a sense of entitlement, okay, can lead crazy. to bitterness, anger, and in some cases, extreme actions against those they hold responsible for their situation. Sanchez's live streams frequently showcased this anger as he engaged in deliberate harassment and attempted to provoke reactions from the public with insults, homophobic Shower clip, slurs, bro. Where's the clip? We can, we can and even threats of violence. One of 
the most strange aspects of Sanchez's streams was his admiration for infamous incels such as Elliot Roger and Alec uh. Menasso. As he often said their names on stream, expressing his desire to emulate their actions. Sanchez's long quote. If you glorify bozos like that, I mean, bro, that's that's like a red flag and you probably be re-educated, you know? That you need to, you, you're in need of re-education. He needs to be sent to a camp, straight up. For notoriety and attempts to outdo other streamers what? led him to perform. Have you seen, I mean, um, he could be doing it ironically, right, as a meme. But anyone who unironically glorifies, like, mass murderers, that's a massive red flag. If you look at all the mass murderers, they all have, like, a weird thing where, oh, man, they, 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 all, they all fucking glorify some other older mass murderer. That's, uh, like, yeah, that, it's, it's a red flag. If, you, if your kid's, like, just, you know, really, really way too interested in Columbine is, like, collecting Columbine fucking merch and, uh, you know, he's got, like, a fucking wallpaper on his computer about it. Like, okay, you got, that's a red flag. That's a red flag. I'm on the lookout for that. I've seen enough true crime shows. All right, chat? Yeah, I've seen enough. Increasingly reckless stunts. <laughs> they have merch! Climbing the Queensboro Bridge. And that, either that or furry stuff. Uh, or, who was that one guy was into? My Little Ponies. Yeah. My, any sort of, yeah, uh, either that or he's a furry. Or My Little Pony Andy. A brony? Yeah, that's a red flag as well. Could be a mass murderer. Causing significant public disturbance. This stunt, which he live streamed, it resulted in the entire bridge what? being closed off and his Wait, stunts, including climbing the Queensboro Bridge and causing significant public disturbance. This stunt, which he live streamed, it resulted in the entire bridge being closed off and his subsequent arrest, which did bring him some mainstream media attention. However, that's not the worst thing he's done. During one of his live streams, Sanchez jokingly made a bomb threat that he made to try and get people to panic, causing everyone around him to I just done fuck, bro. I just done fuck. run away from him. This ultimately led to the FBI raiding his apartment and arresting him. During Jesus the raid on Christ. his apartment, authorities discovered ammunition magazine. That's a different okay, chat. See the context there is completely different. If you're trying to make people think it's a real bomb threat versus if it's like some TTS meme, this is completely different there. There's a massive context. Okay, if you're like Oh, dude, there's actually a bomb in my fucking bag, and I'm about to explode it. You better start running for your life, because you're about to fucking die. You're about to fucking die. That's completely different to, like, Brian going, Beep, the bomb will go up in five. Yeah, like, whatever, okay. Although no f but yeah, generally speaking, bomb threat memes, uh, not that, you know, uh, you know, as much as, like, you know, I'm, I'm like, in the airport. I'm, to, I'm like, Dabby, man. I just want like a bomb threat right now, real bad. I just really want to. It's the call of the void, isn't it, champ? I just really want to, you know. I'm a bomb. I mean, who doesn't? Who doesn't, bro? Firearm was found. Who doesn't? You found see all the security guys with their guns, and you just like thinking, you just want to yell like bomb, you know, just like you know, that's what you want to do. That's what that. <laughs> who doesn't want to do that? Who doesn't want to do Are you that? Suspicious. Do you Meme though. Um, you should never ever do that, and that's why. That's what the call of void is, thinking about doing stuff that you should never do. For example, I'm driving along the road. I mean, you guys see this all the time, right? You're driving along a, like a bridge. It's like a real narrow bridge, and there's no escape. There's fucking walls either side, uh, and there's just a big truck, and you can just fucking swerve straight in that truck and just crash up, instantly obliterate yourself. Uh, but you don't. You don't do it, right? That's the difference. You don't do that. You don't actually do it. Due to his history of praising infamous criminals, following his arrest, Sanchez faced legal proceedings think that. where his past behavior and the impact of his actions People on his victims that. were brought to light. Despite the prosecution's push for prison time, Sanchez was sentenced to home confinement and probation, with his online activities to be monitored. But now, after some therapy, he claimed to have learned from his experiences and expressed a desire to change his ways. We're now moving on to level two. Hitoshi Yuchi, known online as Smash God Triple X, was a Twitch streamer with about 11,000 followers, previously known for his casual just chatting and IRL streams, often featuring his girlfriend Jess. Things were going fine until a live stream in March 2021, when an argument between Hitoshi and Jess escalated in front of their viewers. Hitoshi wanted Jess to leave the room so he could talk to his viewers alone, and he got increasingly frustrated, even demanding that she bring him a beer in a way that came off as pretty disrespectful. Bring me my beer. My beer's right there in the living room, actually. I'm not your maid, okay? Just stood her ground. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, goddamn. Uh, this is domestic, isn't it? Like, he's, this is just sad. Whenever you see this, this shit where, like, it's a dumb drunk person and they're just, like, yelling at each other, it's just, just ugh. And refusing to be treated like a servant. And the situation took a darker turn when Hitoshi, trying to hide the argument on what he was about to do, moved the camera away. But a loud slap could still be heard. 
After the incident, they tried to act as if nothing happened, with Jess seemingly under pressure to downplay the situation. Hitoshi then tried to shift the blame onto Jess, a move that really didn't sit well with his viewers. His attempts to control the narrative failed miserably, and he obviously faced- I mean, this is so cringe. I mean, this guy's like a piece of shit, bro. I, 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 I think I don't know. I can't comprehend this, but then it just must be a really bad upbringing, right? Like, he must have had just a really bad childhood. I mean, to be a piece of shit like that, I don't know. Um, uh, you know, you just you just had a real bad childhood. Heaps of criticism on social media, though he tried to intimidate his critics with cease and desist letters. After the Jesus. event, he got banned from Twitch, and his appeals to return were unsuccessful. We're now moving on to level three. I'm just gonna issue- What, have you, I mean, Chad, have you ever done that with your girlfriend? You're like, oh man, let me just turn this camera right and just fucking hit my girlfriend real quick. Like, I mean, dude. Like, I'm sorry. Let me just turn the camera around and just hit my girl. Or just let me just hit my girlfriend. Let me. You know what she needs? A good hit. Like, bro. Bro, all the time. No one does that. That's not okay. People do that, but they're just. That's just. They're just called wife beaters. All right. They're just wife beaters. That's the reality. They just. That they, they, people do that and they're just wife beaters. <laughs> that's the reality. To another warning, some of the topics we're covering from here on out are very, very dark. Sweden, like basically everywhere in the world, has not been immune to, for lack of a better term, the extreme radicalization of certain individuals, which occasionally manifests itself in violent attacks. The Eslov school incident what? is set against this backdrop where a student, Hugo Jackson, attended. Born on the 12th of May 2006 to a Sri Lankan mother and Colombian father, he is a rather complex figure, or to put it bluntly, a completely brainwashed one. Despite his background of being half Asian, half Latin American. Jackson identified with white supremacist ideologies. <laughs> I'm sorry, wait, the foot. I'm sorry, wait, 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 ask yourself this question, buddy. What would Hitler do? showing interest in Nazism and previous terror attacks in the name of white pride. On that fateful morning, 15-year-old um. Hugo arrived at his school equipped for violence. <laughs> no, what an idiot. What a dumb... What a stupid dumb fuck. Bro, what? I did, it's sad. Dressed in black clothing and a combat helmet adorned with Swedish flags, he carried a gym bag filled with four knives, two airsoft pistols, and a protective vest. Wait, Jackson then initiated a live stream on Twitch, positioning his mobile phone to capture the events that would soon unfold. The live stream began with Jackson playing a Swedish song, before him saying, Remember, lads, subscribe to PewDiePie. Wait, what the fuck? Wait, PewDiePie had not one, but two mass shooters do that. And he said the fucking... Br Wait, what the fuck? Do people think PewDiePie is actually like a secret Nazi or something? Like, what is that? Why are they saying... Why are all like the fucking crazy... Because think about it, This guy's like some crazy white supremacist guy who said subscribe to PewDiePie, then shot a bunch of people. Okay. The guy here in New Zealand who shot a bunch of people was also a crazy white supremacist guy. And he said subscribe to PewDiePie and then shot like a bunch of people. Um, that's a, that's kind of crazy actually. When the Nazis thinks he's a secret Nazi. Bro, what the fuck? That, I mean, that would fuck you up. I feel like that, how does that not like traumatize PewDiePie actually? I mean, obviously, like, the people who got shot and all that, like, that's awful. But then I'm just thinking about, like, I mean, that, imagine that, dude. You got two mass shooters saying, like, subscribe to PewDiePie before they literally went and murdered a bunch of people. That's Minutes into the stream, Jackson, now with the phone mounted on his helmet, approached the school's interior, where he encountered Nicholas, a PE teacher. Misrecognizing the gravity of the situation, Nicholas's comment on Jackson's attire was met with immediate violence as Jackson attacked him. As the attack continued, the livestream captured Jackson's movements within the school and his eventual confrontation with police officer Mikhail Johansson. In a desperate attempt at by cop, Jackson aimed his airsoft pistol at the officer. Oh, it was only an airsoft gun. Oh, wait, it was only an airsoft gun. Okay, wait, I, I totally spaced out when I didn't hear that part. Okay, so only got an airsoft gun. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. What I'm saying is, well, he's not actually, so he's not killing, wait. He missed the four knives. Did he actually kill anyone? You, uh, Chad, I, I mean, I shot... Bro, we, I used to do SF wars and we used to shoot each other all the time with SRF rifles. Oh, he did kill someone. He killed himself. He did kill someone. 
It responded with only warning shots. The confrontation ended with Jackson's arrest, bringing the 25-minute livestream to a close. Jackson's radicalization was not in isolation, however. He was in communication with a Leite Ekerstein, another young Swedish boy who would carry out a similar attack that would injure two people. Their relationship that started through online Morons. gaming and alternative social media oh was marked by discussions God. on politics, racism, and previous attacks, oh with Leite's most frequent yeah. internet searches being they're about just, the They're run by the internet. Like these bozos. Bro, what, the fuck, wait, what the fuck are they doing? It's complete bozos. Complete morons. Attack on Columbine High School. The legal response to the attack culminated in- Would you look at that, chat? Look at this. Look at that. You know how I was just talking about that? Oh, look, they were they're obsessed with the Columbine. What, why are they all obsessed? Why are they all obsessed with the Columbine? What, like, what the fuck? Why are they obsessed with that, bro? Jackson's sentencing to 2.5 years in a youth detention center. A verdict like, that also included- Oh, wow. These guys are so cool, man. They went out around a school with guns and shot people who are unarmed. Like, literal unarmed half-children, you know? Oh, wow. Like, dude, that's so epic. No, it's not. Like, what the fuck? Shooting a deer is more impressive. Okay. They're paying the victims the equivalent of 52,000 American dollars. Luke Mundo. Half kids. What do you do? They're, what I'm saying is like they're not. They're not saying they're not like they shot just kids, right? Well, it depends what you define as kids. Combine. They were like whatever semi adults, right? Half children. What I'm saying is, you know, they're like what? What do you want to call it? adolescent? Whatever, whatever verbiage you would like me to use there. They had a real passion for gaming and decided to enter the world of live streaming in 2014, playing games like Call of Duty and Minecraft. In 2018, he shifted his focus to Fortnite, playing under the alias Mr. Dead Moth. Dedicating approximately 100 to 150 hours live streaming every month. Oh, that looks right, bro. The fucking thing where they spin around in circles building towers, bro. Jesus Christ. Who the fuck wants to play that game? Despite his efforts, his channel struggled to gain any sort of attention to the fateful day in December. During a live stream, a domestic dispute between Luke and his partner escalated dramatically. The altercation initiated over a request for Luke to join his family for dinner and to stop playing Fortnite. Though things very quickly turned physical, with Luke getting up to slap his wife just off screen. The incident, or more specifically the audio of the incident, was captured by Luke's stream and was instantly widely shared across social media. The immediate aftermath saw Luke arrested and charged with assault. His online presence of Mr. Deadmoth was effectively erased, with Twitch and YouTube banning his accounts. The incident sparked a media frenzy, with many outlets sensationalizing the story and attributing the violence to Luke's addiction to Fortnite. However, as more details emerged, the narrative began to shift slightly. Oh, wait, your addiction to Fortnite, bro, doesn't make you, dude, and if you're addicted to Fortnite, it doesn't make you beat your wife. What are you on about? What is he on about? Like, oh shit, Fortnite, Fortnite made me beat my wife, bro. Fortnite made me beat my wife. It does. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, officer. I had to beat her repeatedly, okay? I was playing Fortnite and she tried to interrupt my match. Oh, yeah, my bad. My bad. Oh, yeah, that's true. you're totally all right. Totally okay. Addiction to Fortnite. However, as more details emerged, the narrative began to okay. shift slightly, with Destiny, a well-known political streamer, spearheading the alternate stance. As evidence started to emerge that the physical altercation was actually initiated by Luke's partner, the argument was supported by evidence <laughs> of previous altercations between the couple, including photos Luke posted of his previous injuries at the hands of his wife. The couple's history of domestic disputes... I mean, this it's always one of these things where these domestic things, it's... That it's always it's never a good it's never a good time is it? It's never a good time. Like let's be real, it's always a it's always a fucking no. It, it's it's never a good time. It's never a good time. They like the one we watched yesterday. She was a piece of shit. He was a piece of shit, and they were both fighting each other. You know. Coupled with the decision to reunite, really highlights the circular nature of their toxic relationship. Throughout the public discourse, the true victims of the ordeal being their children, we're going to have to face the long-term risk of emotional and psychological harm. Inquisitor, a 23-year-old Italian content creator, was known for his cosplay videos on TikTok, with his most iconic cosplay being of Ghost from Call of Duty. The many TikToks he made caught the attention of a young editor, AJ, who was 17 at the time. AJ offered to edit some of Inquisitor's videos, and her work was met with enthusiastic praise. Inquisitor's responses to AJ's edits were affectionate, with remarks that ranged from expressions of gratitude to more personal terms of endearment, with him calling her honey on one occasion. While the nature of these interactions could be interpreted as flirtation, 
flirtatious coming from a 23 year old to a 17 year old they weren't nearly enough to condemn him despite the seemingly mundane start the situation took a turn when aj uncomfortable with inquisitor's comments confided in her boyfriend tito another 20 year old cosplayer instead of addressing the issue directly with inquisitor they hatched a plan to expose him as a predator the plan involved oh, what the fuck? What the f okay wait a 20 year old already 17 a 23 17 i mean bro who cares okay what I'm, I'm sorry, bro. You did. What are you on about? What a stupid. What the fuck is this? This is all so stupid. This is so. This is so. What a. What a fucking stupid. What. What the fuck am I watching right now? AJ re-engaging with Inquisitor, attempting to flirt with him, and even going as far as to lie to him and say that she was of age to gather more incriminating evidence. However, Inquisitor did not reciprocate AJ's advances, clearly stating his disinterest bro, and reaffirming his stance cares. against interacting with minors in such a manner. Now, AJ Mine, bro, she's seventeen. Okay, uh, bro, that's uh, so that's the the weird, creepy person is a chick in the situation. Trying to solicit and get all this extra info, bro. I'm trying to bait. Okay. It was annoyed by Inquisitor's rejections, so she sought the help of another TikToker, Keegan's Mask, and provided screenshots of Inquisitor's previous messages without context. Keegan's Mask then published a video accusing Inquisitor of predatory behavior. The online circles that Inquisitor was a part of, armed with obviously only partial and cherry-picked information, quickly condemned him leading to severe and widespread backlash that he found impossible to control. In a turn of events that I don't think anyone ever saw coming, Inquisitor decided to start a live stream. On that live stream, he decided to end his own time on Earth. A oh my god. Wow, there you go. What the fuck, bro? Wait, what the fuck? What the fuck? Bro, I mean, he's clearly not mentally well. Okay, if you do that, you're not mentally well, right? It's mentally unwell. But then at the same time, it's like these fucking bozos trying to frame him for, like, nothing, bro, because he said honey. Because he was a bit cringe. Like, the guy was a bit cringe, right? And they're like, yo, do you want know Let's fucking ruin this guy's life, right? Let's ruin this guy's life. And then... Uh, Ugh. AJ, Keegan's Mask, and Tito issued formal apologies. Why would you end your, your life on stream? Well, he's a content creator, bro. So, I see he just was like... <laughs> I mean, I'm guessing he's like, fuck it, dude. I'm a content creator. And it could be some sort of revenge thing, right? I mean, imagine... Imagine, uh... It's content brain. It's content brain. Right? Let's be honest. <laughs> content brain. Um, no, but it could also, as well, he could also want to fuck them up, right? Think about it. If he, if you're trying to mentally fuck someone up by killing yourself, right? Well, then, you, if you're going to do it on video and then just basically at them, right? At them and be like, that was your fault. And now, now you're, now you're going to traumatize them more because they're going to see the video of you killing yourself and be like, oh, well, they're, they're going to think it's partially, you think about it, what's going to do more trauma, trauma to you, Right? Some guy kills himself and says it was because of you, but you was just like, whatever, you just, it was a text message or like a straight up fucking video file. I mean, yeah, it's, he's just doing maximum damage, uh, which is stupid as fuck and you shouldn't do it. And obviously he's mentally unwell if he did that. But yeah, I mean, the whole, the whole situation is so petty and sad. Acknowledging the irreversible impact of their actions. However, obviously the damage had already been done. And in the wake of the incident, their accounts were either banned or deleted. The incident involving Vogue Saxon is an extremely unique one. In the week leading up to Christmas in 2022, a seemingly ordinary event turned into a horrifying story. Natalie McNally, a 32-year-old woman from Lurgan Island, was eagerly anticipating the arrival of her first child, being 15 weeks pregnant. She spent the evening- I don't know if I want to watch whatever the fuck this one is, bro. I, I don't want to think about my kids, bro. What? with her parents watching the Qatar World Cup final. Her partner, Stephen McCullough, was a YouTuber known as Vote Saxon 07, who had garnered a large following of 35,000 subscribers through his channel, which primarily focused on toy reviews and reactionary content. Despite the unremarkable React nature content. of his videos, Stephen had cultivated a loyal fan base. On the 18th of December, Yikes. 2022, Stephen announced a surprise live stream, inviting his audience to join him for some festive streamy goodness. This marked a departure from his usual content as he'd rarely engaged in live streaming over the past two years. The announcement was met with enthusiasm from his followers, completely unaware of the grim reality. As Natalie watched the World Cup final, Stephen was preparing for his live stream, which was scheduled to start at 6pm. This stream would later become a critical piece of evidence in the investigation that followed. After the game, Natalie began her journey home. Meanwhile, Stephen initiated his stream, though noted he wouldn't be able to look at the chat due to technical difficulties. Well, because 
this streaming software is kind of up the left, it means I can't check the live chat, which is a real shame. So by all means, talk amongst yourselves. I could use my phone to dip in every now and again and uh, check it, but I've but just... This guy is a trash streamer, bro. You can't read chat? I mean, how do, they, how do we know it's not a VOD, mate? Decided that I kind of hate live streams where people just sit and... The normalcy of the oh, evening shattered that. when later that night, Natalie was found brutally attacked in her home. Neighbors reported hearing a scream, but the noise went uninvestigated until it was too late. Natalie was found to have been murdered. Initially, Stephen was arrested as the prime suspect in Natalie's murder, as almost all boyfriends are in a situation like this. With the timing of the crime and his relationship... What? Wait, he's one of these guys? He's one of these guys. What's up with that? What's up with the streamer thing where the streamer gets like a fucking... Like, they get these pop Funko Pop things, and like millions of them, and just like a bunch of like... It's a million toy things. What is that? With the victim, pointing towards his guilt. I uh, get like cool shit. You got like whatever, guns, swords and shit. Uh, you know, you got like technology, cameras, whatever. It's, it's cool shit. Okay, but I don't get Funko Pops and like random shit in like boxes. But a crucial piece of evidence seemed to absolve him. The live stream. Stephen had been streaming continuously from 6 p.m. to 12. Ah, uh, but he said he couldn't see chat, so it wasn't even a live stream. It was a VOD, bro. It was a VOD. Of AM, seemingly providing him with an unshakable alibi, as he could not have committed the murder and streamed at the same but time. Bod, this bro. revelation led to Stephen's release from custody, as he was publicly cleared from any involvement in Natalie's death. Yet, the investigation took another turn, when further scrutiny of the live stream and additional evidence suggested a more sinister reality. It was finally realized that the it's live bod, stream bro. was pre-recorded, allowing Stephen to commit the murder while maintaining the illusion of an alibi. The discovery of CCT- What a fucking bozo! What a fucking bozo. TV footage showing a man matching Stephen's description near Natalie's home on that night further implicated him. The case against- Why would he do that? What a psycho, bro. What a psycho. What a psycho. Just get a divorce, bro. Just get- Like, oh, the only way out of the situation is if I fucking literally murder, brutally murder my fucking wife. Just get a divorce. Stephen was solidified when a taxi driver identified him as the passenger he picked up near Natalie's home shortly after the murder. The CCTV footage and the taxi driver's testimony obviously contradicted Stephen's alibi and really brought to light his calculated effort to deceive the police and public. I mean, uh, the motor that is, I mean, he has, he has literally got a plan. He thought it out. He pre-recorded an entire VOD. Like, the entire time he's thinking to himself, I'm recording this VOD so I can fucking play it later to murder my wife too. Like, think about that. Like, think about just watching that VOD. He recorded that to just, like, this, like, this is my murder my wife VOD that I'm recording right now, dude. Behind the murder remained speculative, but Stephen's jealousy is the suspected factor. It was revealed that Natalie had been in contact with an ex-boyfriend shortly before her death, potentially triggering Stephen's actions. Jesus the Gleb Korablev incident, what? often referred to by the title of 1444, represents one of the most disturbing events captured and disseminated through live streaming platforms. What's happen on now? October 17, 2019, Gleb, a young man from Russia, was streaming on VK, the most popular social media platform in the country. Gleb, who was just 18 years old at the time, chose to broadcast his final moments to an unsuspecting audience. The live stream, which consisted of Gleb waving a gun around, lasted for about three hours, culminated in a moment of irreversible tragedy as Gleb ended his own time on earth as you can expect the video quickly became a viral phenomenon the aftermath i don't get what i don't get is like okay get the other guy revenge suicide right so you want to do as much damage as possible but like this guy like do you really want like the what so people remember you was like the meme guy like you're just gonna post it on live leak and like oh yo have you seen this guy killing himself you know like i don't know like why of the incident was it elks it's not el Kaiser, dude self disturbed but you think elks is only just playing vods but how's he playing vods with the new league bro it doesn't make any sense video quickly spread on youtube amassing over 150,000 views on a completely uncensored and gory upload the video is simply titled 1444 and despite the graphic content it took three days for youtube to remove the video <laughs> during which it was viewed extensively and shared across multiple more platforms. The video was uploaded to a YouTube channel, which was created the same day the video was posted. The channel uploaded several videos between October 17th and October 20th, when it appears all the content was removed. The video spread was not limited to just direct shares. Users employed a troll tactic by sharing videos that start off innocent, but then with a- Bro, what the fuck, dude? I don't want to see this! Abruptly cut to the 144 video, catching viewers off guard and contributing more to the video spread.
Dana's laugh, Bro. known online as Stars Reflay, initially focused on gaming and Let's Plays. However, as YouTube gaming became oversaturated, Staff shifted his content strategy towards a more lucrative... Yep. Oh shit, he's got the Stella, bro. So apparently Stella beer, Chad, is the wife beer beer. So, get... Run! Run! Morally questionable direction. Stars became a proponent of what's colloquially known as trash streaming, a form of content creation where the host performs dangerous stunts or engages in degrading acts for donations. One of the most tragic outcomes of this trend was the incident involving Stars' treatment of his acquaintances and most notably his girlfriend Valentina. The streams often featured Stars performing humiliating and abusive acts on his guests, including a friend of his named Valentine, who suffered from homelessness, alcoholism, and mental health issues. Valentine, lured by the promise of shelter and a share of Stars' earnings and endured years of abuse on camera, ranging from physical violence to being tricked into consuming Stars' own urine. Though that's nothing compared to what happened. What the fuck? Bro, who enjoys watching that? That's depraved. Like, who enjoys... Why would you want to watch that? Like, let's watch a homeless person get abused. Like, that's... Like, that's... I don't know, dude. To Valentina on Stars' streams, with incidents of Stars assaulting her on camera for donations. The culmination of this abuse occurred on December 2nd, 2020, where during a live stream, Stars received a donation of the equivalent of a thousand American dollars to say that Stars should lock Valentina outside on the balcony. So he did exactly that and ended up forcing her outside at minus three degrees and made her wear just her underwear. Valentina was left out there for about 15 minutes, and when she came back in, Stars didn't realize how serious it was until it was already too late. He brought her back in inside. Wait, what? And put her on the sofa in view of his webcam. Though what Stars didn't realize, or maybe didn't want to believe, is that She's Valentina hypothetic. was already dead. The cause of her death was actually from Stars forcing her outside, with the autopsy showing that the head trauma she suffered from him, in combination with the cold, was the cause of her death. After what the f- I was gonna say, there's no way, minus three, fifteen minutes. Like, you don't die from that. Uh, but, like, but a head trauma. Okay, what the fuck? So you hit her in the head. If, if, wait, mi minus three Celsius. Wait, does it? Do you, do you really- Wait. How do people go- How do, um, go out- People go out at, like, minus thirty. Naked, and then and then jump into fucking. Uh, she was yeah sure. Well, they got naked and then they jump into water. But yeah, I guess they go and they jump into water. They what are you talking about, bro? What are you talking about? Uh, cold dive, whatever. Cold. What are we? What are we talking about here? Minus fifty. Yeah, well, you don't I mean, this guy's a beast. And that water can't, because, wait, this water would be frozen, right? If it was actually, because it would be ice if it was, that, so that's got to be like one, like 0 0.01 or something degrees. Wouldn't it just be ice? How does that work? Well, minus, I think minus, in Fahrenheit and minus in C is, is similar. Yeah, look, minus 50 degrees Celsius, minus 58 Fahrenheit. This story begins in the coldest inhabited city in the world, Yakutsk, with winter temperatures routinely reaching below minus 50 degrees, about the same True as sucks. Mars, home to over 300,000 people, people who love their hometown and enjoy their life. Despite the harsh yeah, I think if you've got, a, I think it's, a, it's mainly head injury, drunk, not like a fucking Siberian beast, right? Like not like yeah. Okay, think about it. You're like okay, skinny, drunk, head injury. Yeah. This guy's got, this guy's this guy's he's got cold wrist cap, hasn't he? <laughs> this guy's got. Before we take off this clothes, it's already frozen again. Yeah, this guy's covering Nikolai camera, is he? entering the water slowly. It's important to breathe calmly without rushing. Rushing can cause gasping and cold water shock, which can be very dangerous. It's like, it looks like it's like a hot pool bar, it's steaming, but it's not because it's hot. Bro. 
It's like actively freezing. Like freezing. Ами дурове не вирем за. Организм батон в тангаля. В тангаля для иммунна система или лято. Пей ени дезейз, бро. Инфинити иммун систем. Пей ени кумишка. Но что он делает с нутс, то? I feel like when I get them really cold water, bro, like your nuts get like fucking suck. <laughs> bro, have you ever had that when one of your nuts literally goes, uh, goes. <laughs> I'm like, oh, fuck. She was like, oh, shit, bro. And you have to like, you have to like, <laughs> you have to, like push on your fucking bladder to get your nut to pop back out. Because it, <laughs> it fucking, you know, that happens. Uh, although, because I, one of my nuts is stitched to my sack, because I've obviously, uh, uh, I'm not going to detail, but I got one in my, in my left nut, it can't go in. So when I go in real cold water, it, get, it just gets real tight and it really hurts. Oh, Jesus. What a beast, bro. What a beast. Can that, do that shit to start breathing on it? You don't want to sit there. There it is, bro. There it is. Yeah, boy. Give him a glass. He does it at minus 50, bro. Bro, he's oh, getting by the in. way, if you notice Nikolai's hat, he's people who do ice bathing in Russia call themselves walruses. That's why Nikolai wears a walrus hat. Oh shit, no gloves? Nothing. Oh, damn! <laughs> he's warming up by, he warmed up by rolling in the snow, bro. At minus 50 degrees Celsius. How does it like not f water freeze on his eyes and shit? His face. You have to take care of your feet and your fingers. Yeah, you wouldn't want to get like frostbite. Okay, we met you. Yeah, I'm gonna hit you. What a unit, bro. Nikolai is in a hurry to get dressed. Being outside wet and without warm. I mean, he will literally get hypothermia so far. How long would you... I, see, I feel like you're out like this, he's wet. He's wet and he's just submerged himself. He just submerged himself and rolled in the snow. I mean, what? 20 minutes? 10 minutes? Close. It's extremely dangerous. Five minutes? Now, one of the Nikolai students is ready for an ice bath. Students start practicing every day from the end of summer, so their body gets used to the cold. Yeah, bro, he's out. He's getting out. Oh, is that over? Is that over? How bad, though? Bro, the effort required to come out here, bro, and then to do that is pretty hardcore. Like, you, to think about it, you gotta leave your warm house. You gotta leave, you know, your wife's in bed. It's nice and warm. You get, okay, you gotta get out. It's in the morning. It's minus 50 degrees outside. Minus 50, bro. It's freezing. Well, for, I've never experienced what minus 50 is even like. I don't even know. I mean, I know when it's like minus five outside, I'm like, oh, shit, bro. I'm like fucking Jesus Christ! You know, when, when it's when if it's just one degree, even if it's one degree, I'm freezing my ass off outside. Minus fifty, holy shit! I mean, and then they're going out to, to this place to dig a hole to then submerge himself. That is just fucking hardcore, bro. After he puts on warm clothes, he starts exercising his muscles to generate body heat. There it is. Nikolai is also dreaming to build his own practicing center to help more people to become healthier and stronger. Bro, what the fuck? It's like minus 55 or some shit, dude. Jesus Christ. Anyway, okay, yeah. I mean, that guy must have hit her in the head real hard. Let's be honest. That guy must have hit her in the head real hard. After this happened, Stas was arrested and eventually got a six-year prison sentence for causing her death. When now but six years only! 
I mean, unless, uh, wait, I suppose, wait, six years, okay, well, you kill someone, but it's, I suppose he doesn't intentionally kill her. He kills her because he's a complete moron, dumb fuck. I mean, it's not intentional, was it? He didn't, his intent was to not kill her. Right? Which is, which is, I guess it makes it not as bad. But still, I mean, uh, hopefully he's mentally traumatized for the rest of his life. Right? You know? No primitive. Well, think about it. It's like he was, it was his intent to, like, no, his, his intent, it was intent. Was, I mean, yeah, hopefully he's just mentally traumatized for the rest of his life. And he, he hopefully he turns his life around and then does only good from now on. You know? Uh, he gets out and he's going to, like, devote his life to, like, you know, good. Moving on to level four. Ray J. Sharif Black, Who's a 44 year old nurse, are. found himself in the center of a series of violent acts broadcast live to a small audience on Facebook. At the heart of Black's descent was an ongoing custody battle. For three years, Black tried to maintain a relationship with his kids amidst accusations from his ex wife that he was them a claim that he vehemently denied the emotional toll of these accusations coupled with the strain of the legal fight for custody was evident in black's own words during his live broadcast he spoke of his struggles his isolation during the holidays he also talked of a new relationship that also turned sour leading to legal threats similar to those he was facing from his ex-wife so, meet you know and start dating somebody new and she got pregnant and um Damn. You know, we got in a fight, and first thing she does is threatening that she's going to do the same thing. You're never going to see your kids, blah, blah, blah. Nah, Jesus Christ. It's the holidays, man. I don't have no family, nothing. On December 11th, 2021, in Baltimore, Maryland, Black's turn. I, I, how does he, how does that happen again, twice? I feel like he should not impregnate the woman, right? And I mean, maybe I'm being a hindsight Andy. Maybe I'm being a hindsight Andy. You know, you wait until you confirm she's legit and committed, and then impregnate. Right? Yeah. Someone take him out. Take him out. I got him. I got him. Oh, dude, all right. Um, oh, manifested in the worst possible way. His victim was Tara LeBang, a pregnant nurse and former what? co worker. Wait, what? 2021 in Baltimore, Maryland. Black's turmoil manifested in the worst possible way. His victim was Tara LeBang, a pregnant nurse and former co worker, after forcibly entering her apartment. The sound of gunshots was captured by a neighbor security system, and the police discovered LeBang's body shortly after, marking the end to both her life and that was of her like unborn child. But Black's rampage did not end with LeBang. He then threatened to kill his ex-wife on the live stream, Wendy Natalie Black. Bro, why? So wait, cause it is wait, cause his wives, wait, he, whatever the people he got pregnant were like threatening to take away his kids. Cause I mean, probably cause he's mentally deranged, right? He went then and killed some nurse. Like I don't even, I don't even understand. I don't what the fuck. And he's live streaming on Facebook. Blaming her for his suffering and claiming that she would be his next target. Ray J and Wendy's legal disputes included mutual accusations of domestic violence, though these charges were eventually dropped or dismissed. Their relationship, steeped in allegations and counter allegations, is obviously more than just a very toxic dynamic. Don't play with people's emotions, man. Don't lie on these men. Oh, here's my ex wife right here. Following the murder of LeBang, Ray J proceeded to Wendy's residence, where he carried out his threat. He killed Wendy before ultimately turning- Bro, what the fuck, man? Yo, how did no one call the police in this guy? What the fuck? Oh, Jesus Christ. ...a weapon on himself, all whilst live streaming the events. He made his final act of violence not only a personal tragedy, but also a public spectacle. The aftermath left two children orphaned, with their lives forever altered by the actions of their father. What the fuck? I mean, that guy's bricked. I'm gonna be honest. Like, you know, the other guy who, like, by mistake, killed the chick, right? Like, that's a piece of shit, and I hope he's mentally scared for his life. But it was like he wasn't deliberately doing it. This guy is, like, that guy's just fucked in the head. That guy's fucked in the head. That's, that's like, uh, that's, that's some diss in it shit, in my opinion. Like, straight up. 
town in Bosnia, Straight up. an event happened that was shown live on Instagram by a fitness influencer called Nerman. Now, Nerman was a 35-year-old bodybuilder with a history of violence and involvement in illegal activities, not to mention that he clearly abused steroids, which can result in serious mood swings. Nerman went live on Instagram and told his followers that they were going to see a murder. He showed a woman who was bad. Bro, I, do you know what? This iceberg kind of sucks now. <laughs> Dude, it started up being like funny and kind of, you know, you had the classics. You had the, cla you had the H. Rioc. You had Zian, you know, being a stand up guy. You had the, the bridge situation. You know, and then it was like, and then it got, now it's at the point where it's like, oh yeah, some deranged person just stared up and murdered some fucking woman and streamed it. Uh, well, I don't know what I was expecting towards the end, but like, Jesus Christ, bro. Like, come on. Uh, what the, what the fuck? The beaten and a child crying in the background. Oh, you, fuck, dude. Okay, we're now moving on to I'm level skipping. five of the iceberg. Oh, bro, how on bad a seemingly is ordinary day, on the 26th of August 2018, a Madden NFL 19 game tournament was being held at the Good Luck Have Fun Bar. Another guy, by the way, that guy killed his wife. Okay, epic. In Jacksonville. Uh, that's obviously him being sarcastic. It's awful. I feel like anyone who's doing that should just be fucking. I mean, dude, death penalty should exist for some people. Florida. The tournament Straight was up. attended by approximately 130 to 150 participants and spectators, one of which being 20. 24-year-old David Katz, who had just lost the game. Katz was a recognized figure due to his previous success in a 2017 Madden tournament where he won $10,000. However, despite his achievements, Katz struggled with mental health issues, having been diagnosed with dysthymia, which is comparable to a very long-term depression, an oppositional defiant disorder, which is essentially the oh, tendency shit. to be overly hostile and argumentative when talking to authority figures. Most commonly- Bro, Oppositional defiance? Those motherfuckers are awful. They're the ones, they just, bro, doesn't matter. The second you tell them to do anything. Bro, I remember people that had that, this one guy at school had that shit. And he just got expelled, right? He just got expelled. Anytime a teacher would tell him to do anything, dude, instantly, no, fuck you. Being school teachers. He also had a history of being involuntarily committed to mental health facilities. The day took a very dark turn when Katz, after losing his match, refused to shake hands with the winner. This act of defiance was only the precursor. Leaving the venue momentarily, Katz returned armed with two handguns. What followed was a deliberate and horrifying attack. Katz opened. Wait, what? He lost a game? Bro, no. Wait, he lost a game of. He lost a computer game. And then he was so mad that he lost the computer game, he come back in with guns. Fire, discharging a total of 12 shots. His rampage resulted in the deaths of two individuals, Elijah Clayton and Taylor Robertson, known by their aliases True and Spot Me Please, respectively. In addition to the fatalities, Katz would wound 10 other individuals before ultimately ending his own. The chaos and terror of the attack were inadvertently captured and broadcasted live via the tournament's Twitch stream. EA, the publisher of Madden NFL, expressed their condolences and took immediate steps to reevaluate safety Bro, protocols for future events. That right of that wow guy who shot some dude. He, he shot a guy for like, what did he do? He like didn't give him some item or something. Or he, he, he deleted an item. Some shit like that. And he came around to his house and just shot him. Like, for, um, I, like you know, yeah. They have, like, that's crazy, bro. How could someone with oppositional defiance disorder get a gun anyway? Like, as well. Like, what the fuck's that about? I mean, that shouldn't happen. Some guy's, like, full-on schizo with depression and fucking literally... I mean, I'm sorry, dude. How the fuck does he get a gun in the first place? The Harley Synagogue attack was one of Hugo Jackson's main inspirations, and it unfolded on October 9th, 2019. This attack, occurring on Yom Kippur, the holiest day in Judaism, was marked by its brutality and clear intent of its perpetrator, ah. Stefan Balliot, a 27-year-old German neo-Nazi. On the day of the attack, Stefan attempted to force entry into the synagogue using firearms and homemade explosives. His efforts were completely halted by know, upgraded is, is security measures no, no, no. at the synagogue, including a reinforced door that withstood the gunfire and explosives. Inside, 51 congregants remained unharmed thanks to these security precautions. Stefan had prepared for this day for a long time and live streamed his attack on Twitch. So, in his failure to breach the synagogue, he was still resolute in harming people, resulting in him finding and murdering two individuals and injuring two others just outside the synagogue. In the aftermath of the attack, a deeper investigation into Stefan's motivations revealed a manifesto. This document was written in English and echoed the sentiments of other notorious attackers like Anders Bering Brave. What a fucking clown, bro. What a fucking clown. What a fucking clown. Like, what a bozo. He tr like, what a bozo, bro. 
Further insights into what Stefan's bozo. psyche were provided by a psychological assessment conducted after the attack. Despite being diagnosed with a complex personality disorder and exhibiting autistic traits. He literally can't even, like, bro, what, what a bozo. What a bozo. Like, he's, he's like, bro. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm pissed. It pisses me off. I'm, this shit, this is just pissing me off. I'm, t I'm just saying, I'm getting, I'm about to like, just, uh, yeah. Okay. Experts determined that Stefan was fully aware of his actions and their moral implications. His intelligence was assessed to be average with an IQ of 105, but he was also described to be a socially isolated individual with a fragile self-esteem. Throughout his trial, Stefan vehemently opposed any suggestions of mental illness, viewing them as attempts to undermine his ideological stance. We're now moving on to level 6. Ahmed al Issa is a 21-year-old man who was born in Raqqa, Syria on the 17th of April 1999. He became a naturalized US citizen at the age of 3. He had a history marked by social and psychological disturbances. His family had moved to the US in 2002 and settled in Arvada, Colorado in 2014. Reports from Ahmad's brother highlighted a history of paranoid, disturbed, and antisocial behavior exacerbated by bullying during his high school years. On the 22nd of March 2021, Ahmad armed with two pistols, initiated an attack in a parking lot before moving inside a King Super supermarket. Dressed in what witnesses described as an armored vest, he indiscriminately fired at people, resulting in a swift and chaotic response from law enforcement and emergency services. The first victim was a repairman, followed by others who were either attempting to flee or were caught unaware as Armored entered the Why? store. In total, he claimed the lives of 10 individuals, including a local police officer who was on duty. The live streaming of the incident played a critical role as a bystander, identifying himself as a journalist, broadcasted the unfolding situation to YouTube, reaching an audience of approximately 30... Wait, what? thousand viewers at its peak. The legal proceedings that followed Ahmad's arrest were complicated by concerns over his mental competency. Initially found mentally incompetent to stand- Did Someone, uh, someone live streamed it? I don't even understand. How, how can he fucking do that? Unless he was internet. Or was he way back? Was he like a content? Like, I don't know. Was he in on? Like, I don't get it. Content brain? Unless he was just standing back. He could have just been standing way back, I guess. He was just there. Oh my God, bro. This is your content now. You know, you're like 10 minutes ago, one second. Oh my God, dude, these fucking, I'm gonna be honest, these, I, the, the, I, I enjoyed, I, I enjoyed this video until about, the, until, 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 uh, yeah. Let's, I enjoyed the first 33% of the video. It's just depressing and sad. Um, I, why the fuck do you get guns and then just go around and start shooting random people? Like, yeah, let's just get guns and just go around and just start shooting random people for no reason. I mean, he's got a defective brain, and, you know, he's, de he's de defective brain, right? It's like, it's, it's the same wrong with him. It needs, it needs to be deleted. He's a, he's a defective file that needs to be deleted. Uh, that's the reality here. The question is, how can, how can you stop this from happening in the future? Right? How can you stop this from happening in the future? Because that's what we need to figure out. And trial. It wasn't until August 23rd, 2023, that prosecutors announced that Ahmad was competent enough. A decision Bro. confirmed by a judge on October 6th of the same year. Ahmad pleaded not guilty by way of insanity, and his bond was set at $100 million. Someone, do you know what they need to do? Someone needs to invent a technology, a personal, like a, a, someone needs to invent force fields. All right, that's what they need to do. They need to invent force fields that stop bullets. And just can make guns not work anymore. There you go. So then, if people want to try and get you, they gotta try. They gotta try and fucking Dune. I'm talking Dune style, bro. Dune, Dune style. They need to invent the Dune shield tech, where then, then like fatties and shit can only use like swords. And then guess what? They try and go, like, they go in there and try and kill random people, and the random bystander will just turn around and kill them back. Right? That's the reality. February 2020, a soldier from Thailand went on a rampage. The tragedy unfolded in a military camp and a crowded mall. The incident began on the afternoon of February 8th. The assailant, a soldier stationed at Surathan Fitak military camp, initiated his deadly rampage by killing his commanding officer and the officer's mother-in-law at their residence. The situation escalated rapidly as the gunman raided the military camp's armory. In a somewhat bold move, he also commandeered a Humvee, leaving the base to sow terror in the heart of the city. The gunman was identified as 31 
31 year old sergeant major i hope i'm pronouncing this name right jack rapanth toma described by acquaintances as deeply aggrieved by a property transaction gone awry with a superior toma's actions on that fateful day seem to obviously stem from a profound I mean sense of betrayal and injustice his military training and expertise in marksmanship only served to help him carry out his attack throughout the ordeal as you might have guessed Toma livestreamed much of the event through his Facebook account. The violence spilled onto the streets and reached its climax at the Terminal 21 Korat shopping mall, a bustling center filled with shoppers due to a public holiday at the time. Toma's path to the mall was filled with indiscriminate shooting, claiming lives along the way. Upon arriving at the mall, he continued his assault, killing randomly and taking hostages. The siege at the mall became a protracted nightmare, with the gunmen engaging in a standoff with authorities. Efforts to apprehend Toma included the deployment of the police and military forces, and even an attempt by his mother to persuade him to surrender. The standoff concluded on the morning of February 9th, when Toma was neutralized by the police. Toma's use of Facebook to livestream parts of his attack were fairly quickly removed, but the broader criticisms of the attack were focused Spells, on- I actually like the fact that it is, um, like, uh, you know, military and government, and what systematic failures. I mean, the thing is, you need to know about this shit happening, and you need to know that it happens. You need to, but then it's like almost like this. This is some almost some sort of glorification of the act. You know, oh look, this guy, look, this guy went around and live streaming, killed a bunch of people, and look, he's the the worst guy on the fucking iceberg. Blah blah blah. Oh shit, I'm a mentally deranged person who wants to also be like, oh, I want to get YouTube videos made about me. I'm going to do a live stream at MASH, you know, you know what I'm saying, right? It's like, oh, I don't know. Allowed such okay. an attack to occur as questions were justifiably raised about the military security protocols and the ease at which Toma access weapons. And that concludes. There it video. is. All right. There it is. I'll be honest, chat. I did not. I, okay. When I, when I go to watch a video, I'll like click in, I'll click in and I'll be like, I, I clicked here, bro. I was like, Atria, classic. Zillion OP. I'm done. I'm watching this video. Okay. I didn't know it was going to get that dark. Uh, yeah, people have live streamed the most fucked up shit. Like, yeah, who would have guessed? Like, yeah, fucking complete psychos. Because he is. God damn, damn, damn.